Good morning, comic book fans. Welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes. I'm your other Shorty, and my plan this review was to read Garfield Issue 1 and then review it for you. But I read Garfield Issue 1 in about 1 minute 47 seconds, and the speed I talked, there's absolutely no way on God's green earth to be able to drag that out for a 5 minute review. So instead, I'm going back to read some crime fiction from Boom Studios, this one called Red Before Black. And yeah, crime fiction, if you've watched enough of my reviews, you'll know it's not my go to genre. I kind of like it when they do something interesting and exciting with it. And I don't think. I'm going to be able to give it a 100% fair review of this one, but I'm going to try by ignoring my just, you know, dislike for the genre or my ambivalence towards it at least. And let's just see if it's a good comic book. And first of all, we're going to talk about the artwork. And uh, for this one, we have uh, Goron Suzuka on there, and I've talked about him before. He's a really good artist. I like a lot of what he does. Uh, fantastic colouring uh, from, I'm going to check the name for this one, uh, Ivy Sword. Sorcina, and I apologise because I have mispronounced that one. Um, and the colouring and the line work comes together really effectively. There's one particular moment involving a PTSD flashback stroke hallucination, which absolutely looks amazing. It's this really nice trick of having it tear into and ingratiate itself into the real world before totally consuming the world and being everything that the character is experiencing. It was really, really well done and looks fantastic as it's going on. In terms of the actual writing, most of the plot doesn't feel like it's going to do much to surprise me, um, but it actually is well written within there. The dialogue is kind of cool, the pacing is actually really, really solid. But in terms of the actual story, it falls into what most crime fiction falls into, one of two camps. It is either criminals trying to get away with crime, good guys, cops trying to stop crime or prevent crime or catch people who've done crime. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's not criticism. Even crime uh, dramas, I love do that kind of thing. It's one of the fundamental aspects of it. I mean, Dear Editor is still, you know, some investigative journalist trying to investigate crimes and stop bad things happening. So I can't say that's not a reason to like it. And it actually does something I enjoy, which is show both sides of the story, which is good. One of the best crime things I've ever enjoyed. The Wire is all about showing the two sides of uh, this crime conflict and seeing that People on both sides are maybe some slightly different uh, background or slightly different choices made. They could go either way. It's what makes the show so exciting. In this particular case, it never really lands as effectively. Don't get me wrong, the Fed with me is a bad guy. Like, he comes across that way fairly quickly. I don't think that's a subtle kind of take at all. And most of the, but most of the bad guys we meet are just bad. I mean, there's very little nuance there at all. They do just seem to exude this air of menace, this willingness to do things which most people wouldn't, and their motivations come down to just either face or money, reputation, all the kind of stuff that is very lazy writing when it comes to why crime criminals do crime. Um, I don't really have a better way of putting that. Until we meet our main character, who actually seems to have some differences going on here. She's a, an ex-Marine who's done an, uh, an eight-year stretch and is now trying to basically get work that she can get as an ex-criminal and an ex-Marine. So she's ingratiating herself into a criminal organisation. Uh, and that's kind of like a nice little take on it. She also is the one who has the PTSD flashback. Um, and I really quite enjoyed that moment. Um, I don't really have much of experience personally of PTSD. I do know an ex-soldier who one night while drunk actually sat down and had a, quite a long conversation with it about me. And I don't want to get into too much of the details, but he said one of the odd things that he'll always remember from the moments when it happened is a fight or flight um, instinct kicks in. But because he's not with other soldiers, not with other people he thinks you can trust in that situation, flight is a lot less of an option. He felt like he had nowhere safe to go, no to support him as he tried to get out safely without doing damage to himself or other people, so he'd be far more likely to fight. And we get that in this. And again, I don't want to talk about motivations for it because he didn't have the time to go into too much, and I, even if he did, I probably would have told you that. It's a personal thing. But that little fight off light and how it affected his brain is kind of telling him what happens here, that it is what goes on. And I like that. It, it was quite an effective little story beat. Um, but other than that, I really don't think there's much else to kind of add to the narrative, other than the fact that if she's having the PTSD, it kind of telegraphs a little bit about what her story is going to be. I'm not going to tell you it's obvious. I don't want to say it that far. Maybe it's just, you know, you read enough stories, you watch enough shows, you kind of get a sense of narrative structure and convention. So when I see this happening and I see her in the position she's in and the fact that she has done time, you can kind of put blocks into place and they form a shape. And I obviously can't say this is what's going to happen. I've only read issue one. It's the only one that's out. But it makes me think that I'm not going to be too surprised by anything else that might happen in the rest of this run. And that's a bit of a shame. It had some nice setup. It's definitely well written. It has some cool pacing stuff. And it looks fantastic. But it is, does still fall into the kind of space where I don't really get much from it. However, 
It's already gone out of print. They've announced a second printing. So if you like crime fiction, it could be exactly what you want. And I hope you enjoy it, if that's the case. Uh, that's it for me for now. I'm certainly not going to come back and review Garfield. Until I see you all again. Look after you, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.